everyone, my name is Karen and I'm here with your weekly rundown for Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. This week we don't have a radio sponsor, so if you'd like to help us sponsor our important radio ministry, please contact Jamie in the church office. The phone number and the email are located either in your bulletin or your newsletter. Thank you so much for considering sponsoring this important ministry. Well, we are in the middle of summer, literally smack dab middle of summer. I'm here to highlight a few things that are coming up on our calendar. The first thing is the Blessing of the Pets service. It's happening on Wednesday, July 27th. Dinner starts at 5 with worship at 6. Now, being that everybody's going to be bringing their pets, we do want to keep everybody safe. So please keep your animal either in a crate or on a six-foot leash. Now, the Three Rivers Park District also has a few more rules that we must follow. So please check out your newsletter to see all of those rules. The next thing is we are hosting our fourth annual school supplies giveaway. This is happening on Tuesday, August 9th from 6 to 8 p.m. It's a drive through event for families um, in our community. It's a free event, and so we look forward to um, reaching out and helping families who need a few extra school supplies. Now, if you'd like to donate supplies, those donations are listed in your newsletter. Now, we do ask that you, act, uh, you purchase exactly what's in the newsletters uh, per the school district request. Now, bring those supplies by next Sunday because on Sunday, July 31st, we're going to be packing up those school supplies after worship. Now, you can sign up on our Sign Up Genius. Go to our website, holytrinityonline.org. Hit the Sign Up button. And there you'll see all of the signups for helping us pack the uh, school supplies. And also, we need helpers with passing out the supplies on August 9th. You can sign up for that. Thank you so much for helping us share God's love with all people from one generation to the next. The last thing I'm going to talk about is Rib Fest. I can't stop talking about it. It's going to be the biggest party we've seen in a very long time. It's been three years since we've had Rib Fest in our front yard, and we cannot wait. Now, we do need your help. We need lots of people to make this event successful, from ticket takers to food servers to people uh, monitoring the first aid station to helping out with the kids area to helping us make sure that we're safe and sound and setting up and cleaning up. So if you want to help out, again, go to that sign up button on the website and look for the Rib Fest tab. We would love your help. It's the most fun volunteering you will ever have in our church. So we look forward to a great rest of the summer uh, with all of our events. Thank you so much for joining us. That's all I have today. Enjoy your day. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Worship at Holy Trinity on this beautiful summer morning. Welcome to those of you in person. Welcome also to those of you worshiping via live stream this morning. It's great to be united together for worship. Karen did a great job with the announcements this morning. I have a few that pertain to worship specifically today. I want you to know that uh, if you ever need a bathroom, there are two outside of these walls today, so please feel free to access them if you need. Later in the service, we will also celebrate Holy Communion. So at that point in the service, know that you'll be ushered forward and invited to partake at that time. If you are worshiping online, we would invite you to take out some bread and juice at that point in time in the service so you're prepared if you'd like to partake at home, or you can pick up communion elements during the week from our front office. We'll also have offering later in the service. We know many of you give online, so thank you for your faithfulness that way. During offering, you're invited to go back to any of the tall tables at each entrance to the sanctuary to give, or you can also give via mobile app. Um, kids or kids at heart, you can give in, in the noisy offering, which will be in a milk can during that point as well. 
Last, I want you to know there are refreshments after worship. So whether you've been here for years or this is your first time at Holy Trinity, know that you are welcome to join in fellowship down the hall in the fellowship hall, and they are guaranteed to be great refreshments and coffee ready for you. I think that's enough announcements. I'm going to invite you to stand as we begin in worship, singing A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Continue with our thanksgiving for baptism, and you can follow along on the screens reading the bold. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as your children. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You can be seated. We'll invite any kids who are here to come on forward for the children's message this morning. So today, well, 
much. I'm going to have you stand up in a second, so you're doing great, Waylon. <laughs> For parents and guardians, I'm taking photos today. If you wish to not have any of these lovely faces in them, just let me know after service. You can email me, and I can take care of that. All right, everybody want to stand up with me? Okay, we're going to take selfies today. Does anybody know what a selfie is? Yes, okay. Let's pop on over. We're going to find some people to take selfies with. Does anybody know who this is? <laughs> yeah, who is it? Sorry. This is Pastor Alicia. Can everybody say hi, Pastor Alicia? Can we take a picture with you? Okay, everybody go stand right next to Pastor Alicia. Let's see if I can do this here. Okay, we'll see if I can get everybody. You ready? Cheese. Perfect. Okay, let's go find another person. Who's next? You want to go over here? Okay, who are we going to? And who is this? Lennon. Who's going in the water? She's being baptized today. Perfect. Can we take a picture with Lennon? All right, everybody gather around Lennon. Ready? We'll see. I don't want to block anybody. Ready? One, two, three. Nice. Okay, one more. Should we go back to the sound booth? All right, we're going to go back here. We're going to see who's back here, okay? Does anybody know who this is? Yeah? What's her name? Jamie. Everybody say hi, Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Okay. We'll take a picture of her. You can stand right here, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Perfect. Okay, that's it. We can go back up front. Nice job. Also photogenic. And thank you to all of the people who agreed to take photos. Okay, you can have a seat now. You want to sit up here by me? Okay. Does anybody know why we take photos? Oh, that's for after. We'll get that after, okay. Why do we, why do we take photos? Do you know? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, to remember when you're a kid, when you get older. So just to remember things, maybe like today, like Lennon's getting baptized, so maybe we're taking family photos, kind of remembering those things, right? Does anybody remember what we talked about last week? Maybe Miriam and Joey, do you remember? No? We talked about how um, God sent the Ark of the Covenant for all of the Israelites to safely cross over the river on dry ground. you remember that? Yeah. Well, fun fact, they did not have cameras or phones back in that time. And so today we're learning about how God had um, told Joshua to have one person from each tribe. Oh, that's so nice. Waylon's sharing. He had one person from each tribe go and pick out a stone instead of a photo to remember that story. So then every time somebody asked what that stone was for, they were able to pass on that story and the memory of what God had done for all the Israelites that day. It's pretty cool, right? Okay, so I'm going to have the photos now, and we can go back and look at them and say we met Pastor Alicia today and Lennon and Jamie and remember that today. Sound like a plan? And do you want to help pass out fruit snacks and candy, Waylon? Sounds good. Do you want to do that now? Okay. You're going to take the basket over to everybody and see what they want. And then we'll do a prayer. Okay, then we'll do a prayer. So you can fold your hands and bow your heads and repeat after me for a prayer, okay? Dear God, thank you for guiding us every day. Help us tell your stories 
of all the wonderful things you do for us. It's in your name we pray. And we all say together, amen. Awesome. Okay, you can head back to your seats. Thank you so much. invite all of you who are here to stand in body or spirit for our scripture reading today from the book of Joshua, the fourth chapter. When the entire nation had finished crossing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, select 12 men from the people, one from each tribe, and command them, take 12 stones from here out of the middle of the Jordan. From the place where the priest's feet stood, carry them over with you. And lay them down in the place where you camp tonight. Then Joshua summoned the twelve men from the Israelites, whom he had appointed, one from each tribe. And Joshua said to them, Pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan, and each of you take up a stone on his shoulder, one for each of the tribes of the Israelites, so that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, What do those stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off in front of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the Israelites a memorial forever. The Israelites did as Joshua commanded. They took up 12 stones out of the middle of the Jordan, according to the number of tribes of the Israelites, as the Lord told Joshua carried them over with them to the place where they camped and laid them down there. Those 12 stones, which they had taken out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal, saying to the Israelites, when your children ask their parents in time to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know. Israel crossed over the Jordan here on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you crossed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we crossed over, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, and so that you may fear the Lord your God forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You can be seated. We love those sounds. Well, here we are. This morning we continue in our worship series on the book of Joshua, and I want to share a recent quote from an article I was reading from a newspaper, and the article was titled, Defining Motherhood. How do you sum up something so extraordinary in 100 or fewer words? And here's what one writer said that I resonated with. She wrote this. She said, I'd like to tell you what motherhood means to me. Except it's challenging to sit at my desk while my pockets are full of rocks. In the four years I've spent as a mom, that's what I've become. I am the rock holder. My pockets are heavy with rocks. Rocks sag in my backpack, they clunk in my coat. My son finds these rocks and urges me to have them, slips them into my purses, my sweaters, along with crumbling leaves and an array of sticks, wildflowers, and the occasional cicada shell. He gives me the world, or he tries to. And this was written by a woman named Maggie Downs. Well, Jamie, our office manager, who is much loved by all of us, has told me she can always tell when the girls and I have been here over the weekend. (laughs) Because there are little rock piles outside of the doors, and they are organized either by shape and color or by size, or there might even be some 
kind of creations built with them. And I too often leave the church with pockets full of rocks. And I have to tell you, one of our members was so thoughtful last week. I dropped it, but Tony and Denise brought these really special rocks. So not only have statues been created, now we're creating hide-and-seek games for all of the kids of the church. So if you want to play hide-and-seek with the rocks, come outside after church. But I have to tell you, it's not just kids who like to do this. Any of you done rock stacking before? Maybe it's in a national park or a playground or a beach. Some people like to take rocks, especially flat ones, and make creations. Have you ever seen those? Well, stone stacking has been used for years for a lot of different reasons, sometimes very secular reasons, sometimes very sacred. People have done this kind of rock stacking to signal which way to go on a path so you know you're going the right way and you're not lost. Sometimes people have done that to signify there's danger or to be warned of something like the edge of a path or the end of a path. Other times, however, people have done this for very intentional kind of mindfulness practices, to think about something different for a while, to pause and intentionally do something that you can focus on. But the last reason sometimes people will do this is to mark a moment or a space as being sacred. So they'll set up these rock piles or statues to mark a moment or a space as the sacred spot. Well, why are we talking about rocks today? I think you're tipped off to it by Lauren, but today we're talking about the significance of stones. And if Lena needs a toy, she's welcome to play with the stones if you want her to. But we're talking about the significance of stones today, especially in our story of faith. So I want to invite you to take out your Bible, because our hope is as we walk through the book of Joshua, you get a little bit familiar. So if you have a Bible at home, if you're listening online, or if you want to take out a Bible around you in the chairs, we're going to be looking at a round page at 170, Joshua chapter 4. So as you pull it out, I'll remind you we're in the sixth book of the Bible, so we often might talk about the Pentateuch, which Penta kids, we talked about this a little bit. Penta means five. So that's the first five books of the Bible. So you're going to pass over Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and then comes Joshua. So that's where we are today. So if you want to turn to page 170, that's where we're going to be around Joshua chapter four. So as you may know, here we are in the story of God's people. God's people, the Israelites, they were in Egypt. They were enslaved by a really oppressive ruler named, anybody remember his name? Pharaoh, right? They were oppressed under this ruler and enslaved. So God calls Moses, right, to lead the people through the Red Sea, okay? So he parts the waters, leads the people through the Red Sea, and now they're approaching the wilderness, right? Then they get to the wilderness. They're, you'd think after God had just parted the Red Sea, shown him this incredible miracle, you'd think they would have this faithfulness to God, but after this miraculous deliverance, what do they do right away? They start complaining. They start complaining, and they even start to make other gods. Isn't that like us sometimes? We can have this incredible experience, faith experience, and then so quickly forget. Well, so they come through the Red Sea. They're in the wilderness for 40 years. And then when they have sight of the promised land, Moses has gotten them this far. They have sight to the promised land. And then Moses hands off the baton to the next leader, who is... Joshua, right? He hands off the baton. So Moses has taken them all this way through the wilderness, all their complaining and idol making, gets to the edge of the promised land, sees it, and then has to hand the baton off to Joshua. Well, here we are 
We're at the edge of the waters last week. This time it's the Jordan River. And God calls Joshua to lead them through the Jordan River. So we heard Lauren remind us the priests were asked to go in the middle of the Jordan River, hold up the Ark of the Covenant, which represented God. It held the Ten Commandments. And what happened to the river a second time now? What do we see happen? The waters part, right? The waters part, and Joshua walks them through this second water crossing. Well, today we hear what happens when they get to the other edge of this water crossing. We heard what happened the first time. Now this is a new generation. So we heard today they get to the other side of the Jordan River. And Joshua asks them to have 12 people go back in. And Joshua asks each one of those 12 people to pick up a rock or a stone. They're used synonymously in the Bible. So they ask, they're ask. they asked to pick up a stone to bring it over to the edge of the water and to put it down where they camp. So once they got, get these rocks there, I want you to read with me what's the significance. Why did they do this? So if you're following along to chapter 4, I want you to turn to verse 21. Look at verse 21, and we're going to start at the quotes starts with the word when, when your children. So we're going to read 21 to 24, and I'll invite you to join me. So it says this, when your children ask their parents in time to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know Israel crossed over the Jordan here on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you crossed over, as the Lord God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we crossed over, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, and so that you may fear the Lord your God forever. So what's the reason for the stones? Why did God call Joshua to have those people go back in the water and get them? What'd you say? So they remembered. It's like the selfie. Thank you, Lauren. So they remember. They remember what God did and who God is for them. They're going into this new land. I really like how Eugene Peterson paraphrases this. He was a pastor who wrote the message paraphrase, and he says it this way. He says, the reason for the stones is so that you'll have something to mark the occasion. So everybody on the earth will recognize how strong God's hand is, how strong his rescuing hand is, and so you'll hold God in solemn reverence, always. So Joshua is this whole book that's meant to be reminding how God is faithful and has been for generations. And we read at the very first chapter, God said, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you, Joshua. And in the same way today, he said, just like I was with you through the Red Sea, so I will be with you when you go through the Jordan. The rocks are meant to be this tangible way of reminding them of who God is and all that God's done. And he'll do it again. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine recently who was moving. Anyone moved recently or planning to move? Yeah? Well, she told me there's nothing like moving that makes you get rid of things, right? She said it makes you question the value of everything you have. Is it worth moving? Ben and I have been married 13 years, and I counted we have moved into nine different places to live in those 13 years. But what's even more challenging, I think, we've watched four of our grandmothers move from their homes into apartments, or even to a single room. And we've watched them have to be selective with what they took with them. And for each of them, of course, there were many significant 
things. And in some instances, they had to leave some behind, some treasured pieces. And when they shared the story of what those pieces meant, then they suddenly meant something to us. And these are pieces in our home that are so valuable to us because they mark a moment, a memory, and even more significant, a relationship we have. You know, I want to tell you, I think of, when I think of these pieces that, that mean so much to us, I think about the art on our walls, and the same is true in our church. Our interior space team graciously offered to hang a stained glass piece of art that my grandfather made. It hangs in my office. Now, my grandpa was a pastor, but I never knew him as such. He was retired before I understood But there's something really meaningful to me when I see it hanging, knowing that he had this chapter of ministry, and now as we continue in ministry, it's built on the generations before us, and it will be by the generations after. And I'm reminded that as God was with him in his time in the Navy and in ministry, God continues to be with all of us. I, too, think of a picture that Darby, some of you know Darby from our church, Darby painted a picture for us in the middle of COVID. When many of us were isolated, we weren't gathering here for church, and I remember she dropped it off on our doorstep, and it hangs in our home now, and it meant so much at a time when we felt so lonely to know that our church continued to be together. And I think of another piece still hanging on our walls. There is a picture of, created by our kids. There are these snow people, like snowmen, where each circle has a letter of their name. And for me, it marks this moment when they learned how to spell their name. Each snowball had a letter. It marks that moment and has value to me. Or lastly, I think of a picture hanging again on our wall that comes from my aunt who lives in California. And I, it has such deep meaning for us because it was hanging on her wall when she offered her home to us when we had our honeymoon. We were in graduate school. She offered to fly home and we flew to her home and it was hanging on her wall when we were there. And it was a picture, an abstract painting of a church that reminded us of the chapel at Gustavus, where we came to know and love each other. You know, there are few things in our home that don't have a story and have great value to us because of the moment and the relationship it marks. And today, that's exactly what the stones were for the people of God. They marked this moment for the Israelites This moment where they were asked to pause. They had just gotten to the promised land. And they were asked to pause. And to remember what God had done. Because it was years in the making that he promised it. And they they were called to remember that this God took them out of slavery, delivered them. They wandered in the wilderness. They crossed through the Jordan. And it was this tangible reminder that whatever comes ahead... They have a God with them who cares and delivers and saves and keeps his promises. And today we're going to remember a promise at the baptism font in a few minutes for Lennon, but also for all of us, that God promises to love us and claim us forever, no matter what. I began today talking about this quote from a mom who had rocks in her pockets, right? And I could really identify with her, but it was her child's way of giving her the world and her child's way of showing love. And I think today in the story, rocks are a symbol where God invites the people of God to take these stones as a reminder of his love, his care, his presence, and his character. I don't know about you, but we like the Israelites. I think we can sometimes forget so quickly when something has happened that God has done for us. And I think that's why we worship. 
we gather like they did around the rocks to pause for just a moment, to reflect about what God has done in our life, and to also offer up our worship, our rocks, you might say, in reverence to God and gratitude. So I want to close with these words from the Psalms. Today we gather to worship our rock, our fortress, our deliverer, our God, the rock in whom we take refuge, our salvation, and our stronghold. Amen. I'll invite you to stand and we'll worship in body or spirit. And today we do have the joy and privilege of celebrating a baptism. And as we hear and make these promises for Lennon, may it also be a reminder for all of us God's promises to each of us. So I'm joined by Lennon's parents and sponsors today as we celebrate. God who is rich in mercy and love gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized, the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. So parents, called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, who do you present for baptism? <laughs> Wonderful. As you bring Lennon to receive the gift of baptism, you're entrusted with these responsibilities. To live with them among God's faithful people, bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture them in faith and prayer so that they may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. So, Samantha and Travis, do you help promise to help Lennon grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, say we do. Wonderful. And now sponsors. 
Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Lenin in Christian faith as you're empowered by God's Spirit and to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, please say we do. Wonderful. And now, people of God, I'll invite you to stand in body or spirit, and I'll ask you as the church, do you promise to support Lenin and pray for their new life in Christ? If so, please respond with a resounding, we do. We do. Wonderful. You can stay standing as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. So I'll ask, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And now as we pray, <clears throat> you can watch the screen. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And by the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. You can be seated. Now I'll invite you to bring Lenin over the water. I'm going to sprinkle some water on your head, Lenin, okay? Lenin, Rose, I baptize you in the name of the Father of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You did great, Lennon. Here's a little washcloth. Good job. Do you want to hold this water? And now parents and sponsors, I'll invite you to just put a hand on Lennon, maybe on her back, if you can reach. And we're going to say a prayer. If you'd bow your heads with me, we'll say a prayer for Lennon. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your children new birth, cleanse them from sin and death, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Lenin with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. And now sponsors and parents Big brother, I'll invite you to make a cross on her forehead. And as you make that cross, you can each just go up to Lenin and make a cross on her forehead. And as you do, we say, Lenin, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. You can, you can put your finger in there. In fact, it's good for all of us to do, to be reminded that God loves us. And we have a gift for you, Lennon. We're going to light this candle for you. Because we remember, do you see this, Lennon? Do you see that? It's to remind you that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. <laughs> Yeah, and we want you to light this each year, if you can remember, on this day. Just like those rocks to remind you that you are loved by God. I'll give that to you. Did you drop that? You know what, Lennon? I have something else for you. So it's okay if you dropped it. 
We have a couple gifts for you, Lennon, from the church. The first is a prayer shawl. And this has been put together for you by someone in this church. And when they, when they put it together, they prayed for you so that you'd always know you are wrapped in the love of God and this church. So neat, huh? I'm going to give this to you. And then this is a lamb for you to take home. So when we talk about baptism, we're reminded Jesus is the lamb of God. And also, you're already invited into the mission we share to share God's love with the world. So this lamb purchased 10 meals for somebody who is hungry and needs them. Do you want to play with that, Lennon? <laughs> now I'll invite you as a congregation, let's welcome the newly baptized together with the words on the screen. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Friends, this is our new sibling in Christ, Lennon Rose Colonel. Let's welcome Lennon to the body of Christ. now take a few minutes to gather our offering again. Thanks for all of your generosity and know you're welcome to come forward as well. I'll invite you to stand as we pray together. And after each petition, I'll invite you to respond with the words, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God, you are a generous God, and we thank you for all that you've given to us. You've blessed us with many gifts, ourselves, our time, our possessions. God, use what we have to offer to serve the world with your love. Lord, in your mercy. And God, on this warm weekend of summer, we pray for all who are traveling for renewal, reunions, and respite. Please go with and remind all who are away of your presence and your gift of Sabbath. Lord, in your mercy. And lastly, we pray for all in our community who are especially in need of your care. Specifically, we pray for Eric, Jacqueline, Luke, Deb, Anne, and Kayla. Give us courage to be good neighbors to all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy. It's into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your grace and mercy because of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, as we enter into the service of Holy Communion, we remember it's in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. 
this is my body given for you. And he said, do this for remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. And he said, do this for the remembrance of me. Let's join together and pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You can be seated. For those of you who are communing at home, I'll invite you to take out your bread and lift it up. And as you eat it, remember this is the body of Christ broken for you. And again, we invite you to lift up your cup. And as you drink of it, remember this is the blood of Christ shed for you. For those of you who are here in person, you'll be invited forward by an usher. And as you come forward, you'll be offered a wafer, which you're invited to eat and then partake in either red wine or the lighter, which is juice. If you'd prefer to have communion brought to you, simply let an usher know when they come to your seat and we're happy to do that at the end. Please know you're all welcome to come forward and partake. This is God's table set today.
invite you to stand in body or spirit. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. And now as we go to share God's love for all people, know that Christ goes with you. Christ goes before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you watching over you, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing.
peace, serve the Lord.